All right, we're going to go over some of the other tools and some of the other things we're going to do, not in depth, but just to introduce them to you. Um, Frank asked earlier about are we drywalling these edges too, and I told him yes. Um, one thing when you make these pieces for your tops and your sides, they may, need to be cut for a width where they actually cover the thickness of the drywall here. You don't want to keep them back just with framing and leave this big opening here. Um, and the reason for that is when you do put your metal corner bead on, it's not, it's barely catching on there sometimes when you do that. Um, so you want to bring it out. You don't want it sticking out past, so you can leave it a little bit small, but you want to fill that void as much as you possibly can. Um, that way that sits on there better, okay? Um, it, this stuff is really hard to get on there square. Um, so the more you have there to work with, the better it is. Um, so this is your corner bead. Um, we'll go over installing this a little bit later. Um, but to cut this to the length, you do use tin snips. Um, cut, cut this stuff pretty good. Um, in your corners, you do want to take these to a 45. Um, they come together better. So you're going to have a lot of pieces coming here together. Um, but all these, so you'll have a piece coming up here. And you'll also have a piece coming across here. So you've got three of them coming together right in this corner. You want every one of these to be on 45s like this. So all that's coming together actually is this point here. Um, if you let that all build up here with all this metal and keep running it out square, they, you won't ever get them to fit good. Um, but we'll go over that a little bit more in depth later. Um, so that is the metal corner bead we will be using. There's some other styles of corner bead. Um, this type here. Uh, if you've ever seen any archways, um, it's, it's kind of flexible, it's plastic, but it's cut here on this one side so you can actually bend it around circular openings. Um, so that's a type that's out there. Um, there's also a type here. Um, a lot of times when you drywall something or somebody drywalled and you're trying to finish it, there's not real good nailer here. Or maybe it's a chimney that you're skim coating over. Um, but you want corner bead on it to cover an old chimney up um, brick. That happens sometimes. You wouldn't be able to nail into that very good. So they have a metal type of corner bead here that you actually mud on. So you'd mud this on just like your tape. Um, mud underneath, put it in there, smear the excess out. That does work good in certain situations when you need that. Um, another thing they have out there, um, this is the tape. I did kind of want to go over this. We're not going to get into much of this unless you have some patching on your project. Um, but hopefully when we get out back, we can do a bigger room and see how this works. Um, comes in a roll, you just rip it off to the, roughly the lengths you need. What I do want to point out here is they talked about in your inside corners making a fold, right? And then you run that in your inside corners. But if you look at this stuff, it comes with, this is, you can see that's dented in that way and then that sticks out. If you're mudding a seam and you put that seam out, it's a lot harder to hide because it's got it peeking out there. You always want to put that stuff on there in the right direction with that going that way like that um, the best you can because it does hide better. Um, there also is some other type of tape. This works really good for uh, oh, oddball angles. You can actually mud this around a corner if you had to. A lot of times there will be maybe something coming down at an odd angle. It's not on a 90. So this stuff doesn't work very good for something that isn't on a 90. Um, but you could um, use this type here. Um, cathedral ceilings. They're really long and it's really hard to keep that seam up there nice and straight. This works a lot better than using paper tape because it's stiff. A um, lot more expensive but it's a lot stiffer and it'll hold a straight line a lot better. If you try to do it with paper tape and how, depending on how your drywall come together, that can look real crooked looking down through there where this will hold a lot straighter. So a different material out there. Um, some of you have probably seen this stuff before. I, I don't care for this stuff very well. I've had bad luck with it. Um, it's supposed to save you a coat of mud um, because when you put your tape on, you got to put mud underneath. Remember that? And then you smear it in it. Where this stuff, you stick it right to the seam when it's good. This stuff's kind of old. But then you spread this across there and it sticks to your wall. 
um, and it's supposed to save your coat of mud. But I've had this stuff crack out really bad before. Um, kind of sticks, and then you this mud over top of it. Now, you said that you've used it and you used a better compound underneath, which is the Durabond, right? Um, and, and that's a powder mix that you mix up by yourself. It don't have water added. Um, it does dry a lot stronger. Um, it, it, so that probably does work better with that. Um, I generally don't like to use that stuff because, like I said, it cracks out. Um, some other tools that um, you'll use, um, once it's all mudded, you got your sander, uh, hand sander. You do not use a power sander on this stuff. Um, I always have students ask every year because that seems easy, get a power sander on. Um, but a power sander, them are probably $60, $70. You'd wreck it in about an hour's time. Um, it would be, you'd throw it right in the garbage because of that drywall dust filters and everything. It'd just be junk. So, no, you don't use a power sander on it. You don't use a belt sander on it. Um, this is a lot of work. And what I've always heard is you should always have to sand your own drywall work, your own drywall muddy finishing because it'll teach you to put it on good. First few times you'll do it, it'll probably be on there where you have a lot of sanding. And sanding's not fun. Um, it's a dirty job and it's, you really gotta work your arms to be able to um, get it sanded. Um, but you just rake this back and forth to do your sanding. We'll go over that a little bit more later. Um, some other things that you can sand with, they make these uh, kind of spongy blocks. I like these. Um, they take it off good. It seems like you got some, really good control, especially in tight spots. This is a little bit different one. It has an angle made on there, makes it nice for getting in your corners. Um, so we have those. Um, there's also, you've seen on the movie, these pole sanders. Um, these take some getting used to, to run. It's not as easy as it looks. It seems easy, you don't have to use a ladder. But a lot of times if you're not running these correctly, they'll catch and dig into your drywall mud work and then you're back up there repatching. Um, but we won't use these until we get on something a little bit bigger. Um, definitely not on your little projects, but I just want to show you what they look like. They do pivot all over up here so you can get flat on your board to be able to sand. Um, this is a little bit di different type of paper than this. Um, this is a mesh type paper. Um, you can also use that on these, or there's this type here that's actually like a paper sand. Or, Which one works better? Um, this seems to last longer to me, um, but a lot of times this will leave some little tiny lines in it. I generally buy this when I, I use it for myself. Um, one thing when you're putting these, whether it's on this sander or this sander, you gotta make sure you get this stuff on there pretty tight. If you get this and it's like looped out, um, and it never fails year after year, I'll be handing the same two or three people um, sandpaper after sandpaper. A piece of sandpaper like this should sand a whole room, a whole bedroom, without ripping, without wearing out. Um, that don't generally happen in here. You got a little project like this, and I'll give the same person five and six pieces of sandpaper to sand it. And that makes absolutely, and most of the time what it is, it's not that they're wearing the sandpaper out, but they're not getting it on here tight. And if you leave a loop there, that ends up ripping right across here. So um, make sure you're trying to get that stuff on there tight. If you're not sure, come and ask so we're not wasting the sandpaper. Does it matter if you get the end piece where there's um, the tapered side and put it up to the front side there? Like you you're, you're saying here? No, like on top of where you put no. the pieces. It's nice if you don't have this tapered seam because it will actually make it dip in there a little bit. But you're you're put, you're going to apply a lot of mud to cover that. Well, I mean, like, were you were you cut here? Uh huh. And then what about if you put a piece that's not cut, like a side that's not cut? Yeah, Is that's it, okay. That's okay. Yes. Um, with your project, you're going to be kind of limited of how you cut your pieces up, or you're going to waste a bunch of drywall. Um, that's kind of in the directions, and I make you go through figuring that so we know. Um, because you should be able to cut a, a certain size chunk off that and get every, every one of your pieces. Um, as far as, especially your big pieces, these two. If not, you're wasting a bunch of drywall. Okay, so you got to be careful and you got to think a little bit how you're going to cut it and not, not have a bunch of waste. Um, 
back to this stuff. Um, they showed you this the other day. There also is a different type mixer here. Um, both of them fit in the drill to mix your drywall mud up. Um, we'll go over that once we get to the mudding stage and the finished stuff again. But what happens when you do this too much? Air bubbles in your mud, right? Which is gonna cause air bubbles in your finish, which is not good. This causes you more work. So um, remember, we don't wanna over mix. Um, mixing it, I want you to use this drill, the right angle drill. Myself personally, I use, I'll use my cordless drill, but I bought my cordless drill. It's really hard on them, okay? So I do not wanna see anybody get a cordless drill out to mix drywall mud up. Everybody is using this, okay? Um, we'll go over that again a little bit more in depth, but it's a good idea to have an empty bucket full of water. And as soon as you're done mixing mud with one of these, you bang it off on the edge of the bucket like this and get it right in that water. Even actually run the drill and make this spin in that water because it cleans up a lot easier. We will clean these every shift, okay? Like I said, if that stuff gets left the next day, this stuff does not clean up very good. Um, so we wanna make sure we're cleaning up good. Um, some drywall tools, these blades or knives um, come in all different sizes. Um, they use this a lot for their first covering. I usually start right out with a six inch um, and I don't usually get any smaller than that unless I need it smaller to fit in something. Um, either way is fine. Um, like you said, coat after coat after coat, you keep using a wider and a wider trowel as you apply your coats. So a um, bunch of different sizes. Um, we have these mud trays in here. Um, I get really picky with I usually have where you have to sign these out because it never fails. You leave them dirty. Well, no, I clean mine. Everybody cleaned it, but I got three mud trays over there laying in the sink, threw in there with drywall mud in them, and everybody gone, left for PM class or vice versa. So I probably really will stick with signing these out and you bringing them to me and showing me when you're done that you cleaned yours. Sign out sheets usually hanging right up there. Um, because it never fails and it gets me kind of irritated when it's day after day no one's cleaning their mud trays. Now, do you put a layer of um, mud on there and then tape and then mud again or do you put a couple layers and then tape? One layer, th then you run your tape, then your other layers go over top of your tape, okay. yes. And we'll go over that a little bit more. Um, once you guys get, some of you are getting close to ready to mud, we'll, we'll have a little, another little demo on putting the mud on. Putting your corner bead on, applying the mud, fixing some holes, that kind of stuff. We'll do another demonstration. Um, they kind of showed one of these in the book. I brought my sprayer in. Hopefully we can get this out this year and do a couple different textures so you guys can see how to do those. Like they said, you got to play around with the air. I've added this, mine did not have that on there, but it's really handy to not have to go back to your compressor and adjust your air, have it right where you're working and be able to adjust the amount of air that's running through the thing. Um, that helps. Um, you dump your material in here and then trigger to pull it. Um, there's different hole patterns here um, that you can turn it around to. It lets more air out, less air. Also has a couple different nozzle sizes for different things. Um, kind of handy to know, neat. Um, we'll show some knockdowns maybe. This, um, um, another type of finish that we're gonna try to show is this manually done with a brush like this. So I brought my brush in. Um, usually when you buy these, these are sticking straight up like this and it takes a little while to get them broke in. Um, so, but once they're flat like this, they make a nice pattern on the ceiling. You kind of mix your drywall mud up the same way as you did with that. I can't, what they say, two parts to one. I have better luck through my spray gun half and half. Well, half water, half drywall mud. Um, for this, it probably can be a little bit thicker. Um, normally what I'll do is take a heavy nap roller and kind of roll it a little bit on the ceiling so you have some mud up there. And then taking this and keep dipping it in your five gallon bucket and you keep smacking the ceiling like this. Um, it's kind of takes a while and you got to keep playing with it to get it up there even. Um, but it makes a nice little, call it a rosebud. 
Um, you can actually do a knockdown with this. Put it on with this, and then you take a trowel after it dries some, and you kind of rake it across there real lightly so you don't leave lines here and here, and it kind of flattens it off, um, makes it nice. You can also do a knockdown with this. That's what they showed. Um, so I want to show you guys a few different things later on. Um, we won't probably be able to do nothing with these projects, but if we get a room drywalled out there, we'll show a few different things. So, um, Am I forgetting anything, Mr. Biggs, that I should go over now? I, I think that's enough information for you guys to be able to get going on your projects. Um, so I do have notes that go along with this, so we are going to go in and go over those to make sure everybody has that. And, um, then you guys can go where you need to go.